Greetings from Burning Daylight Farms NC. Welcome to our uh, video today. Today we're going to have uh, Justin from uh, Smoky Creek Bee Farm giving us some pointers on bees. Y'all enjoy. As that brood on that on the that you're pulling out. Uh, so I'm looking at the top right now to kind of see how they're doing food storage wise, and then you get a feel for where the population is within the box yes, for sir. a good idea of where the brood would be. Gotcha. This one probably. And that's brood comb. Mm -hmm. Comes a dark color. So right now, that right there is capped brood. It's older brood, mm -hmm. and all of that is uncapped brood, younger brood. And the difference is age. So it starts off as an egg, spends three days as an egg, then spends six days as a larva, and then it spends uh, roughly 12 days as um, it pupates. So it spins a cocoon, taps itself, and then chews its way out as an emerged Ouch. fully pupated bee. Outstanding. And that is the varroa side. Mm -hmm. The bees, the number one thing that kills hives are varroa mites. It's a, like a little tick like creature. Yes, sir. Um, so, right now, if you add a varroa side at the right time of year, take the mite populations, drop it down so that they can overwinter. Fairly disease free. Oh, good, good, good. They're so calm. This hive is, the next two probably will not be. Okay. In other words, I may need to back up a little. No, you probably should be fine because I'm not going through them fully. Okay. Just kind of spot checking. These guys are giving me some warnings that they're okay, but okay. not too happy. <laughs> okay. And the can on top is? Sugar water. Okay. Okay. Just punch a little hole in it, I guess? Or? Mm -hmm. So I drill a... Um, I know I'm asking a lot of questions. No, 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 you're fine. So like two and three quarter inch hole mm -hmm. in the lid, and then... When I'm not feeding, it's like a PVC cap. Okay. If you spray paint it white, the sun won't break it down, but okay. otherwise it'll eventually degrade okay. away. Okay. So just little holes drilled in the lid, and as they, yeah, as they drink out of it, it they'll, they'll use it up. You take just like uh, the head of a nail, mm -hmm. puncture it down just to make a hole. Some of them I do more than others. Okay. It depends on how fast you want them to take the food. Gotcha. Um, and they'll 
they'll actually close up the ones that they don't want. So if it's coming out too fast, they'll propolize it up to seal it up so that it starts coming out slower. If you feed them slow, you're trying to get them to build more brood and get bigger. If you feed them fast, you're trying to have them put on weight. So usually this time of year between now and middle of October, I just kind of give them some food and they kind of decide what they want to do. They put on some weight. Goal is to have each box weigh about 100 pounds. That means in this area, you're probably doing pretty good weight wise, 100 to 150 pounds. Is that a guardian? Uh, this one is uh, Ultra Breeze. Okay. Since we've bought the place, I've been just been trying to read up on bees and stuff. I mean, because you definitely perked my interest. I appreciate you having them here. Sure. I do. Yeah, yeah, likewise. You know. They say, I've heard, I don't know if it's true, but bees are the um, second most written about subject right behind religion. <laughs> So there's plenty out there. Yeah. And we've got another piece of property over here on the, on the dirt road. If uh, I mean, if you want to put some hives over there, we're cool with that. That's just that's entirely up to you, Justin. Okay. If um, my hive numbers grow a little bit, I may take you up on it. Okay. When you open up a hive and you smell bananas, they're mm -hmm. not very happy. <laughs> they're not happy? Yeah. Why is that? It's their alarm pheromone. Some bees are just more angry than others, just like people. Oh, okay. So some you can open up, they're fine. Some you open them up, they start giving off scent to tell you that they're not really happy with what's going on. Yeah, they're a little more, a little more upset. Yeah, I guess that head bumped. Can you see, Mama? Is that better? Hmm. That's the Pilates wood thinker. Well, I'm going to ask a dumb question. People give you different answers. The uh, smoke, it's just more or less to make them move off the um, comb so you can work or just calm so, them down? It's kind of a combination. So you use it to disrupt their pheromones. So when they're giving off their alarm pheromone, telling everybody in the hive to look out, there's an intruder. Mm -hmm. The smoke disrupts it, so it stops. It calms them down a little bit. You also use smoke to kind of move them in a direction if you want. Gotcha. So that's a frame, pretty good brood. Yes, sir. Kept brood, all older brood. Outstanding. Not much of a mix to that. So that's a good strong hive, then. Yep, this one's pretty strong. It just ends up being that the stronger the hive, the more defensive they have a tendency of being. So it's kind of a plus and minus because the stronger the hive, the better honey the more splits you can make but also the more temperamental of the bees you have to deal with so because of that some people just choose to keep their small their hives fairly small this size is smaller some mm -hmm. people will make them gigantic because they're willing to deal with it it's kind of what you want to do gotcha I know people, when I post this, they'll probably ask, well, how many times do you get stung when you're doing this? So, this 
So typically on kind of any given day, sometimes none, most of the time two, three, four. Uh, I started keeping track last year. Last year in 2019, I got stung 157 times. Mm -hmm. This time, so far, I've been stung about 119 this time. So, <laughs> of course, the winter months you don't get stung at all. It'll be five, six months in a row where you don't get a sting. And then certain times of the year, like when you requeen, you have to go through, and it's they're really not happy at that point. You know, I'll get 20, 30, 40 stings a day doing that kind of thing. So right. it depends. Your body just builds up an immunity to it. Uh, kind of. Um, so if you get stung, they did a study, and I think it was 50 times or less on an annual basis you've got like a 20% chance of developing an, aller an allergy to bee venom. And then like, once you make it to like 100 times a year, it drops to like 5%, and then like 200 times it drops to like 1% or something like that. So it's not that you build up an immunity, it still hurts, Yeah. but so first sting of the year, for me, especially in the face, my face will swell up. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And then over the course of the year, it, I don't really get as much swelling. So like I got, I just came from another yard, I got stung on the finger, and right now I have full use of it. If this was February and I got stung, I'd, it'd be a little stiff, a little bit hard for me to move. But other than that, it's not much of an immunity. Okay. Well, I hear that. So the propolis is just kind of like what they use to fasten the comb start with, or yep. how's that? So they'll use it to, um, if there's something, uh, so the bees have a desire for one spaces, I think it's like five eighths inch, mm -hmm. it's bee space. If it's more than that, they'll use um, uh, propolis or comb to make it smaller. If it's less than that, then they'll usually either chew it out to make it wider or just propolis it shut. They also use propolis to immobilize things. It's also antimicrobial, antiviral, antibacterial, so it's a disinfectant. And then if something climbs in there, they'll use it to entomb things. So especially March, I'll open hives and I'll find the lizards or field mice that made it its way into the bottom board and they'll sting it to death and because it's too large for them to move they just propolis it down so it's like a little mummy that, that's just chilling there outstanding yeah. kind of their their wonder product Justin, I was rude at the beginning of the video. Tell them who you are and, and what in your company when you have a chance. Sure. Let's pull this brain out. Pretty good brain. You see the queen? No. Probably calm enough that I can bring them over. Okay. She's got a little blue dot on her back right there. Outstanding, there she is. Larger than all the other ones, but genetically the same. In entomology terms, it's called morphologically distinct. They feed her a special diet. So, any one of these cells, not these, but when you're young, an egg which is right in there, or a young larva up to three days, 
if they feed it a super protein rich diet, she will just continue to grow larger than all the other ones. Her ovaries will develop more. She can become a queen. Okay. Is she about the size you want me as far as healthy looking? And yeah. All? So you can't really tell too much by them by the way they look because sometimes you can have some really tiny runty queens that do phenomenally. Sometimes you can have some really plump fat ones that just don't do anything. So while you look to see if she's here, sometimes if you need to, most of the time you're telling based on brood pattern. Okay. So her laying pattern's pretty good. Um, if you have spotty brood, which is like in one section, it looks kind of like shotgun pattern all over the place. Mm -hmm. At that point, they're not, she's not a good queen. She probably didn't mate very well, or she's got a bunch of diseases. And then this, right here, these are um, worker bees. So sometimes the bees will uncap cells. Mm -hmm. You notice that's a little bee. It's working on developing. Is that a high beetle? Yep. They're in here. There's one that's chewing its way out. Yes. Um, sometimes the bees will uncap cells if they think that there's a d disease present or sometimes they'll chew down and just kill the larva if they believe that either it's not good genetics, uh, there's poor nutrition in the area, or they just need to decrease um, the number of brood that they have. Okay. So sometimes, this is generally a sign that they're clean bees. Okay. So. Let's see where she went. So don't squish her. There she is. So I'm um, Justin Kay, um, the owner of Smoky Creek Bee Farm in southeast uh, Greensboro. I have hives in Guilford County, Randolph County, sometimes take them to the mountains, chase down sourwood. I do honey, make my own queens, make my own equipment when I have the time. Kind of mess with bees. That's kind of it. <laughs> we appreciate you having them here. Oh, well, I appreciate you hosting them. Absolutely. Absolutely. The difference between a, uh, a worker bee and a drone? Uh, drones are male. Okay. Worker bees are female. So the workers and the queens are all female. Drones are males. Drones don't have stingers. Mm -hmm. So the stinger is part of the female reproductive system. It's um, part of their ovary system. So... Drones have no purpose in the hive other than for mating. So they don't they don't forage, they don't contribute, they don't bring anything back. Um, they just kind of exist. And then come fall, since they don't contribute to the hive, they don't have any um, purpose, the workers will actually kick them out of the hive and kill them. They usually don't kill them, they usually kick them from the colony and then they die of exposure, they get cold and that's kind of it. Right. And that's it. That's a typical visit. Justin, we appreciate your time, appreciate you letting us shoot a video you oh, this absolutely. morning and, and the information. And uh, y'all check them out on uh, Facebook and you got the, the Facebook page Smoky Creek Bees I do Bees also as have well. a website Smoky Creek Bee Farm. All right, all right, y'all check check Justin out. Hoping yeah. to have some more honey next year. Bees cooperating. It's very good. We have sampled it and it is very good. Good. I'm glad you like it. From Burning Daylight Farms, we out of here. We appreciate y'all tuning in with us. We appreciate Justin taking the time to give us this information and do this. Y'all check out his website. It's listed in the description. And from Burning Daylight Farms NC, we out of here.